Yes, that's right. An alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Or analogous. It doesn't have to be a carbonyl. It can be a cyano group. But alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds, we can then add nucleophiles to the beta position of the Michael reaction. Very common for the, for the alcohol product. Okay, uh, let's get to, before we get to Michael, though, let's uh, go back to Claisen. <coughs> Claisen condensation. And yes, it's two equivalents of methanol. I don't know if that was shown last time, but that would have helped me there a little bit. Uh, we can do mix, mixed claisen. What is a claisen? A claisen is basically an enolate that attacks a carbonyl, but it doesn't attack an outer hydroketone. If an enolate attacks an outer hydroketone, you're going to end up doing aldol chemistry and make an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Because in that mechanism, the outer hydroketone doesn't have a leaving group, and so the oxygen of the outer hydroketone ends up being the leading group. But if you attack an acid derivative, such as an ester, it does have a leading group. And you're going to reform the carbonyl. And thus you don't lose it. Mixed glazing. You've got to have some reason for selectivity. We've got a base. Where are you going to make anion here? Here's the reaction. Where are you going to make anion? At the most acidic site. Everybody agree? What's the most acidic site in the, in the flask here? Right here? No. Right here. Why? Two electron withdrawing groups. We got this activated methylene between two electron withdrawing groups. What can it attack? It could attack another of itself. That could be a side reaction. <coughs> but, and it. This may depend on how you're doing the reaction. You may use excess of this. But what could happen is this could attack here. Electrons up. Instead of doing full mechanism, can I just bring electrons back down? And kick this leaving group off. ACL substitution, we have an acid derivative. Basically, instead of OFL under my hand, we now have the nucleophile under my hand. What was the nucleophile? Well, let's. Under my hand, instead of that, is going to be this carbon. And that carbon has a cyano group. And it also has a carbonyl. So this whole thing is now bonded to the carbonyl via an acyl substitution mechanism. Additional elimination. Look at this H here. How acidic is that H? Would you like to make an anion there? Yes. That'll be triply stabilized. Stabilized by resonance into that carbonyl, resonance into this carbonyl, resonance into the cyano group. This is going to be even more acidic than the starting material. This has a pKa probably about 6 to 8. This is going to consume your base. So you just you have to use more than the catalytic amount. <coughs> you need a full equivalent of base. But you're generating what, what is an acid compared to the base. And at the end of the reaction, how is this going to exist? Well, it's an acidic product compared to the base. It's going to exist as the anion, right? You get a sweater in the pool, it's going to be wet. How are we going to put the proton back on? H plus workup. Well, that just takes you back to the neutral compound. There's your product. <coughs> you have to go through some acid base chemistry. So, what was originally an enolate carbon attacked the carbonyl, kicked off a leaving group. There's no alkene here like you get with an aldol. That's because with the aldol, the alkene comes from a different mechanism that comes from having no leaving group. That's aldehyde ketones. When you attack an acid derivative, you're going to reform the carbonyl. <coughs> if you forget about this, what type of compound did we just make here? A beta keto ester. You see it? This has a cyano group there as well. Uh, I believe that's what clasins give, right? What does the clasin give? Beta keto ester. Beta keto ester. <coughs> Wouldn't there be like four possible products 
Are there, aren't there four possible products? Uh, that's what I said. Uh, um, oh, let's pull it down. Theoretically, there are four possible products. But that's why I kind of started out by saying, depends on how you do it, <coughs> you, you know, you could, you could self-react. But is this one of the four possible? Yes. Do we understand how this could be formed? Yeah. Mixed glazings can, can be done. I really would only argue there's going to be two possible here. Because really, this is, this is where you're going to make anion. And then the question is, will it attack another of itself or will it attack the other molecule? So I would really say there's only two possible. Because you have reason for selective anion formation. Because this enolate over here, this, this CH is more acidic than that CH. So I would not say four, I'd say two. But then you can use maybe excess of this. And there's some other tricky ways where in practice you can sort of get your selectivity. Um, yes. Uh, so below is, uh, no, where are we going to make anion at down here? Um, right here. What can it attack? It can attack another of itself. We, we even have a ketone here. The other ketone of itself is maybe more reactive than this. These, these are sort of prone to being having side reactions. And, but if you react this with another molecule of itself, then you say, well, what's this for? I, as shown, I probably want to be reacting to this if it's kind of shown like this. But again, yes, you have possibilities for other chemistry. I said a long time ago, the more you learn, the more questions you're going to have. <coughs> well, the more you know, the more you're going to question, right? If you knew nothing, you would just never ask a question. Questions come from knowledge that doesn't make sense. Basically, that's the clasin. Now, if you do it in, uh, in tri-molecular, you can do that. This is example below. Uh, in tri-molecular, treat this with base, can we make anion here or there? It's the same position. What can this attack? Another. How about right here? Electrons up, back down, kick that off. What's the product going to look like? What's, what size ring are we making here? Six. Six-membered ring. Uh, there's an ester that's not part of the ring. Let's draw that here. Right. Then this carbon attacks the carbonyl. Make this bond. Electrons out, but it reformed. If you come this way, it's one, two, three, four, five carbons between the carbonyls. I can connect, connect that. Five carbons between carbonyls. One, two, three, four, five carbons between carbonyls. Basically, there you go. That carbon is now bonded to this carbonyl. Right? The O-methyl, which used to be bonded to this carbonyl, got kicked off by that carbon. It's an acyl substitution. Again, I'm doing short, quick. That's not a real full mechanism. We understand addition and, okay. Product, beta keto ester. That's just an internal reaction. When you do an internal place, and it happens to be called a Diekmann, Diekmann condensation. I wouldn't worry about one in Diekmann. Uh, I don't think you probably would want to see that. Um, All right. So enolates attacking, and usually esters are most common here because if this was a chlorine, that was an acid chloride, which are great for acyl substitution. What 
base are you going to use? Try to use this as a base. Well, it probably is not going to just take the anion. It's probably going to add to the acid chloride, and you're going to get a substitution. Then you're just going to get the ester. So, acid chlorides are more difficult to store. I mean, it, there's no reason to have the acid chloride. Esters are going to be most common. You could theoretically have an amide here, but the amides are more or less electrophilic. Just your ester is just way more, just the most common here. Um, in terms of what acid you're going to be using. And of course, if this was a carboxylic acid, well, you're never going to make a carbanion before you make the oxygen anion. And so if it's an acid, you have the problem with the acidic age, which we talked about. So the ester is just the right functional group to be using here. Um, now, if you take this and treat it with H3O+, plus, uh, maybe reflex it a little bit, what would be the problem? Do it. What's the name of your product? Do it. Okay, everybody, you, you there with me, yeah? You there? Everybody good? How did this happen? Hydrolysis of the ester. And you have the carboxylic acid, but then what happens? Uh, it leaves the carb carboxyl, it leaves as a CO2. And Why would the carboxyl just be gone? Condensation. Mm -hmm. Or not. Mm -hmm. Why would it decarboxylate? Yeah. I'm just looking for the, um, for, the, for the clarification. Why would it decarboxylate? <clears throat> it's first going to make the, the acid, right? Let's just test three chemistry. That's ester hydrolysis. What's good? What, anything happen here? Isn't there like the oxygen on here to form like a double? Well, you don't have to tell me mechanism, but what's what you're thinking? Why did you go to decarboxylation? Because it's like energy might release carbon dioxide. Why will it release carbon dioxide? It's indirect. Because it's what? Because it's a carboxylic acid that has a carbonyl beta. And we said the carboxylic acids that have carbonyl beta readily decarboxylate. Okay? It's a beta keto acid. What are beta keto acids prone to doing, especially with little heat? Losing CO2. Basically, you lose CO2, the H is going to end up here. <coughs> and that's the product we showed, which is called cyclohexanone. <coughs> By the way, if this was an NH here, what product would we have made? There would have been an NH here. Okay. And is a base going to abstract a CH or an NH? Uh, NH is more acidic, but uh, you'd rather make an anion on nitrogen. But I'll tell you that that's more acidic. This is the case where a CH is more acidic than an NH. Because the carbanion will be resonance stabilized. What's the pKa of an alpha CH? Well, this is an ester. What's the pKa here? 25. About 25. Good. What's the pKa of an amine? Not as a base, but as an acid. Good. It's about 30 to 35. Let's just say 30, make it even more acidic than it, which is going to be deprotonated first. PKF 25 or 30? 25. The CH will be deprotonated. What can it attack? It'll, it can cyclize. Okay, so having the NH there should not affect any chemistry. It will be protonated over here because we have acidic conditions. You'll just have to add base to deprotonate. <coughs> and what is this? What can you convert that to? Okay, that's what we use. All right. Uh, then the question becomes, well, how do you make this?
Well, I can see making that the same way as I kind of see over there. That's different over there, but very similar. Very similar. I, I didn't think of this, okay? Uh, question. How about the one over here? How would you do on this one? Also under the intramolecular. Down here. What size ring are we going to make down here? What can you envision? Five to five, remember? Where do you want to make anion in here? Here? Left. Well, you could. But that attack in here is going to be difficult because you're trying to make a one, two, three, four, five, a seven membered ring. Okay? Seven membered ring. Here it is. It's like. Okay. It wants to do this, okay, because this is nice, but you want it to do this. It keeps doing this, but making the bigger ring is more difficult. But instead, let's make it here, and this can attack here, electrons up, back down, kick that off. Basically, this becomes binded to carbonyl instead of the O ethyl. Again, we're doing acid derivative chemistry here, and this it will be five-membered ring. Five-membered ring. <coughs> Carbonyl is here. Car this carbon, that's the bond we just made, and this carbon has a ketone on it, yeah? Is that it? Yes. And that's acidic H here compared to the base. We're going to have, it's going to be deprotonated. We're going to have to add acid to put the proton back on. But that's your problem. Had to go through acid-base chemistry. Now that's actually not a beta keto ester that we made. So it's not strictly a Claisen product, but it's, it's essentially things can be sort of modified or touched and. Product is no longer a beta keto ester. It's a beta diketone. That's because this over here, I mean, this could have been an ester too. Then it would have been a beta keto ester. But this happened to be a ketone here that attacked. But it's chemistry, it's chemistry. It's still chemistry that can take place. Now, if all you do is memorize it, Claisen's get beta keto esters, you would never be able to do this chemical reaction. You would be amazed that this product would be able to be formed. Right? Because it ain't a beta keto ester, you'd be like, what happened here? <laughs> but if you know mechanism and chemistry, it's just, right? <coughs> Hopefully everybody sees it, I'm just sort of joking. Of course we see we know mechanism, right? Um, okay, are we at Michael? Michael, okay, let's get at Michael. Uh, we can add two carbonyl, that's called a direct addition or one two addition. We've been doing that for a month now. But alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyls. We can also add to the alkene. And nucleophile can come in here. Electrons move here. Typically, we do not add to alkenes like this. Regular alkene, you do not do this. Why are we able to do it with this alkene? Because the resulting product here, the resulting anion, is resonance stabilized. And so it's an easier transition state, easier activation energy, etc. This reaction <laughs> can't take place. Up here, if there's no leaving group, we just throw in a proton and we get an alcohol. Down here, you also, if you just throw in a proton source, you can protonate this. There's an extra H here now, and we can get such a product. And nucleophile has been added to the beta carbon. 
So anytime you see nucleophiles beta to a carbonyl, you can envision that they came from a Michael reaction or Michael addition. Now, just to uh, point out, uh, commonly sort of discussed, the 1 2 addition product is your kinetic product, and thus it's formed fastest and thus always first. Where the 1 4 product is typically your thermodynamic product. If an equilibrium between the two roots can be established, then this typically is your favorite product. start doing reactions that we'll, we'll discuss that information there. Okay, what type of nucleophiles will, uh, will do this? What type of nucleophiles prefer 1,2? What type prefer 1,4? Let's look at alkyl or aryl nucleophiles, carbon nucleophiles like Grignard reagents or alkyl lithiums or cuprates. Here we go. Grignards and organolithiums give 1, 2 products. Cuprates give 1, 4. Magic of copper. We got a Grignard nucleophile or alkyl lithium. They're the same in terms of this chemistry workup. These add one, two. We got the methyl anion, right? These electrons add here, electrons up. Electrons up. There's the new methyl. And this is an anion, right? I'm sorry, we got two methyls. So there's methyl here. Two methods. There's the new method. Two methods. That's a nucleophilic addition to carbonyl. We've been doing it for a month. It's called a direct addition. It's also called a one-two addition. What can happen next? Nothing. There's no leaving group. Is this is this reversible? Can this come back down and kick the methyl back off? No, we talked about reversible, non-reversible reactions. So it's not going to be able to reach an equilibrium with the other 1,4 addition. 1,2 addition is fastest. It always is formed first. That's it. This, this, is formed, this formed first, it can't reverse. You're not going to get 1,4. All you can do is put on proton, H plus workup. Can I just put the H there? There you go. There's your product from a direct addition by the Grignard. We just ignored the alkene. Cuprate. We know this. We talked about this. This is also a essentially a methyl anion, right? Where have we used cuprates at before? Reducing. Okay. Not aldehyde. Um, Making ketones from what? Acid. Acid. Uh, if you look at the note on that handout, cuprates don't react with esters. Then um, carboxylic acids. Not carboxylic acids. Acid chloride reacting with acid chloride with an organic cuprate, replacing the chlorine by an acyl substitution mechanism that will stop at the ketone. Great way to make a ketone, right? Okay. The other time cuprates are commonly used is right here. Cuprates will also, instead of adding direct addition, they will add Michael. And so this adds here, electrons here. Hmm. 
methyl here, get anion there, right? And then H plus workup. Well, you can just put the proton on. I'll redraw it. Is that it? The H is there now, right? That would be a product. The methyl was the nucleophile, the methyl anion. The nucleophile is beta. We added a nucleophile to the beta position. Couldn't the first one also form an epoxide? Should it be still in pairs to be stabilized and see the aromatic ring? Which one epoxide? In the first one we went over. The oxygen could attack the alkene and the lone pairs could... Uh, the phenyl is not uh, polarizing enough to make the alkene electrophilic. Um, if so, then you, you're saying that you can take this and add nucleophiles here? No, sir. Um, from the oxygen though, next to it. The but that's essentially what okay, you're saying. Yes. No. The, the alkene, yes, the anion would be resonant stabilized, mm -hmm. but it's Delocalized onto carbon. Okay. It would actually be more resonant structures, but it's all carbon. Okay. And so that's typically not chemistry that's going to take place. I just know that. Okay. I like that you are thinking that because as students, you should think analogy. Hey, shouldn't this happen? Very good. You just don't know enough because you just don't have the experience enough to know where the cutoff is between what can happen and what can't. And I feel like that's just not going to happen. Uh, okay, so two different products down here. Just to sum it up, what's, what's going on up here? What are you going to get here? Green yard. Right, one, two addition. I agree, that's going to be your product there. But with the cuprate, not there? No? So in the end, cuprate's two micro additions. Magic of copper, I'm not going to, I don't even know if I can tell you why it's magic of copper. Apparently, the presence of the copper makes the, makes the 1 4 addition in the kinetic product. Because if it added to the carbonyl, it's not going to reverse. So, how does the cuprate presence of copper make the 1 4 the kinetic product? I don't know that I could tell you. Uh, so, it's another. Uh, <coughs> Commonplace, you'll see cuprates. Um, what about heteroatom nucleophiles? These typically give 1 4 addition. Because, first off, it has to carbonyl first. But if this adds to carbonyl, it can reverse. And that was covered on one of the previous handouts. Non-reversible, reversible reactions. Okay. You can envision if it reacts with carbonyl, what would you get over there? What, what, what's the name of the functional group that would form if the amine reacted with the carbonyl? An amine. Also called a shift phase. But it means are reversible. <coughs> okay? Since it's reversible, it's going to achieve an equilibrium with the other possible reaction. The other possible reaction is your thermodynamic product. It's more favored at equilibrium. That's why you get 1,4. Electrons add here. That's Michael addition. Alright? And the new H is on the carbon now. 
Do we need to work this up with acid? No. Why not? Because when Where does the H come from? We'll call the ring the R group. It's comes from one of the two nitrogen or one of the two hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen has two H's and a methyl. Doesn't the addition give that? So where can the proton come from? It doesn't. You don't have to add acid here. Just H plus transfer. You got an H plus transfer. The nitrogen becomes a proton source. So it's just H plus transfer. And we can show product. All right. Down below, I'm just doing a micro addition with ethoxide adding, ethoxide coming in. Where could the proton come from here? Ethanol. Ethanol. Ethanol could serve as a proton source. Because this has a pKa of about 20, ethanol is about 16. Ethanol will supply the proton. Okay, so these are just examples of Michael additions. Uh, think backwards here. Okay, take a look at those. We'll look at them on Friday. Um, these so-called Michael adducts, Michael products, sometimes called Michael adduct. It's a kind of a, yeah, a word meaning product. Adduct. These Michael adducts. Um, well, let me focus over here. This this tends to be pretty reactive. These things tend to be pretty reactive. Um, And sometimes can be toxic. They tend to be pretty electrophilic. Nucleophiles will add to them. In some cases, even more than to a carbonyl. There's intricacies in here of why. Um, very electrophilic. Nucleophiles like to add to these. Uh, there's some anti-cancer drugs. You know, some anti-cancer drugs are known to be alkylating agents. Basically, they supply a carbon that nucleophiles like to attack. Here's an anti-cancer drug. I think, that, I think the business end is right here, the alpha, beta, and saturated carbonyl. And nucleophiles, such as amines in DNA or certain proteins, are adding here. and you're making covalent bonds. You're covalently modifying something. And so the drug, I believe here, you can look it up and clarify, but a number of these, the mode of action is more than just sort of IMFs. It's actually a covalent reaction going on at that reactive site by a micro addition. All right. Um, Okay, let's see where we can set the stage for Friday, our last uh, regular lecture. Toxicity of Tylenol. Some of these handouts are in the, in the other set, uh, which was white, I believe. Uh, the back portion of that, some of these. Uh, polymerization. And enolates, another type of nucleophile we'll look at is enolates. How does an enolate add to one of these alpha beta unsaturated? Does it prefer 1, 2, or 1, 4? Because an enolate can be a nucleophile as well, right? That will take us to the end of the chemistry here and to the end of the semester, really. And we'll have an open book final exam. Wait, what? What? It's on the back page. There's your final exam. Open book. Okay, guys, uh, group lab report due on, come to lab. Uh, we're kind of pushing the end here. Yeah. Finish strong. You only have one opportunity to finish your spring semester of 2019 strong. All right.
20 years, you're going to look back and say, hey, remember in 2019 when we finished semester strong? Or you could say something else. You could say, remember when we didn't finish strong? What do you want to say in 20 years? Those 20 years will be here like this. Uh, okay, guys, think about what you want to do. See you soon. I think you're kidding about this open book. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.